Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBus Central. Today we're going to take a look at Makulu Linux. This is a really awesome Linux distribution, guys. I think you're really going to like it. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Makulu Linux. If you want to take a look at their website and maybe download the ISO, it's makululinux.com slash WP. They got a really nice website. They're working on some great things, not just for Linux, but also for Android. And they got a great forum. It's got a good bug report. This is probably one of the most interesting Linux distros based on the fact of the way you can change the look of your desktop. They've got a lot of information and updates here. Should you have any questions after downloads, you can go to their forums, which pops up and just get over here. If you have any issues, you can zip in there, ask your question and get going. But I'm not going to spend too much time on their website because I want to show you the eye candy that this OS gives you. So I'm going to close out of that. If you download Makulu Linux, throw it on a USB or open it up into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, you've got eight different layouts you can set your desktop up as, okay? It comes out of the box with Windows, and it's a very good-looking desktop. I like the background. You've got a conky over here. gives you date, time, shows you what RAM's being used, how much hard drive's being used. At present, I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. I'm at about 858 megabytes being used with the desktop manager open. Now, what I want to do real quick is go ahead and open up their terminal. And let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP installed. And they do. And on HTOP, it says we're using 875 megs. So your Conky and HTOP are right in line with each other, which is a good thing. So I'm going to close back out of that. Then we'll move the desktop manager back over. You've got a lot of different things you can adjust on here. I'm going to go through the themes first. Right now, we're on Windows. And if you open this up, You've got the transparency, and you've got kind of a Windows look, okay? Now, if you want to change it over, let's say you want to go to Flash. All you got to do is click there. So I'm going to click, and when you click, it changes everything up. If you can tell, it changes your background. Adjust your bar down here. Look at the transparency you have down here, and then changes your menu. You can see the changes there. Now, I do want to apologize. I just noticed that we were on the simple theme, not the Windows theme, because I can identify it with the background. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and switch over to the Windows theme real quick. And as you can see, it switched over. The bottom panel has changed. You've got transparency down here. It's more of a blocky looking panel. And then if you come over to the app menu, you get the Windows look. Okay. And also you can tell that the icons have changed. So that's Windows. So we've looked at that, Flash. Now we're going to switch to Core. And as you can tell, Core switches everything over. You don't have a bottom panel anymore. It moves up to the top. You've got your app menu here. And then down on the bottom, you have a dock. Okay, so it changes that up and changes the wallpaper. And along with the wallpaper, it has switched over your icons. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Dash. And Dash switches everything over. You get their panel to the left over here. You've got a new set of icons. And you've got a new background. Your Conky is still there. So I like the way that changes. I actually really like the look of that one. Okay, we come down bottom. We started out on Simple. Now I'm going to take a look at Unity. And Unity loads up with a pretty cool looking background. Okay, your icons have changed once again. And then you've got more of a Unity bar like you used to have in the old Ubuntu Unity. You do have a top panel. It has just a little bit of transparency in it. And then your applications menu is right there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at GNOME. And GNOME has popped up. And you can tell the Conky is still up here. You've got a brand new background. That looks really good. And the Conky looks good against that background. If you come down here, let's hit the app menu. And you get that GNOME look and feel. So let's go ahead and go back. And you've got your panel down here. It's got a little bit of transparency you can see. So that's pretty nice. And last, 
but not least is your plasma. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, and it has popped up. You get a brand new background. That looks good. Your conky still up here. Looks good against the background. You got your single panel down here. And then you've got some icons that are attached to the panel. And let's go ahead and open up the application menu. And you get the KDE feel. So, if you're someone that likes changing the looks of your desktop, but doesn't want to put all the work in, this is definitely something to take a look at. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at these buttons down here. You've got desktop clock. Let's go ahead and take a peek at it. You can enable, disable, set clock color to black or white, set clock format, set clock position, quotes update. You can do it hourly or daily. That's your quote right here. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Panel and dock options. Intellihide the panel and dock. That's pretty cool. Let's close that. Theme manager. You can adjust the theme of your cursors and then, of course, the color for highlights. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of that. Wallpaper manager. Let's say we wanted to select a wallpaper. And your wallpapers pop up over on the right. I guess each one comes with a specific wallpaper. No, there we go. They got some good looking wallpapers, guys. I want to try something like, let's try that. That's awful bright. There are some great looking wallpapers in here. I'm going to leave that wallpaper up. Let's go ahead and open the desktop manager back up. You've got tutorials, constructor tool, important links, and settings. So I'm going to switch back to Flash real quick. Okay, Flash pops back up. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the desktop manager. And we are back here. You come down on your panel. You've got your base info down here. Battery, sound, internet, date and time, caps lock, number lock. And then you come over here. You've got your file manager, which is files. And it opens up. I do like the icon set that they have with it. Let's make that smaller. So it looks pretty good. You've got your usual suspects over here. And then you've got your standard home folders right there. I like the look of that, guys. Okay, let's go ahead and close out of that. Of course, we've got Google Chrome. We've already run HTOP. Where did our clock go? Let's go ahead and open up Desktop Manager. Our clock disappeared. Desktop clock. Maybe I disabled it on accident. Let's enable it. Okay, it's back. I don't know what I did there, guys. And you've got your software, which is the Ubuntu Software Center. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with that. You've got accessories, Catfish File Search, LeafPad, Text Info, Variety, Warpinator, Graphics. You've got Nomax, Internet. You've got Google Chrome, of course. Office, you've got Calendar and Contacts. So if you want an Office Suite, you're going to need to download LibreOffice or something like that. Sound and Video, you've got MPV Media Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control. System Tools. Bleach Bit, Boot Repair, Desktop Manager, Discs, Full Screen Gestures, GW Package Manager. If you need to download a Debian package offline, just right-click on it, open with GW, and it will install on your system. Grub Customizer, HTOP, System Languages, Main Menu, Pi Menu, Software we just saw, Synaptic Package Manager. You've got Synaptic installed. Synaptic is pretty easy to check out. You can do everything through a category if you want to. You could do a search if you wanted to. Search out what you're trying to download, whether it be OBS, GIMP. Search it, find it, click it to install, mark for installation and apply, and you're good to go. So let's close out of that. Let's go back down here. We were at Synaptic. What else do we have? Time and date. Time shift. Time shift is awesome. Once you get everything set up, downloaded, and installed the way you like it, if you've done it with a regular file system, just leave it on rsync. If you have installed with BTRFS, make sure you check that. But you'd click next, and it would list right here your SSD or hard drive where you have your operating system installed. You would just click on that, click next, and what you would do is take a snapshot of your system. You want to do this after everything is completely set up the way you like it. So that way, should you have any problems in the future or have a catastrophic failure, you can come back in here, restore from that image, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down to your app menu, system tools. We were at time shift. You've got tweaks, update manager, user groups, XFCE terminal, universal access, utilities. You've got your calculator, system monitor, terminal, and tweaks. Well, guys, that was just a quick look at Makulu Linux. I looked at this about three months ago, was really impressed with it, but wanted to take another look at it. Like I said earlier, if you're somebody that likes your operating system to look different and customized without putting in a bunch of work, this is the distribution for you. 
I'll be sure to include the download link in the description below. But let me know what you think. Is this something you might download, put on a USB, or throw in a virtual box and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.